All right, today we start the last chapter, potentially. Uh, we started to deal with chapter 11, dealing with um, area and volume. All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about is circumference and arc length. So some of this is you're going to know. The circumference is the distance around the circle. Okay, because we all know it goes around the outside, around the outside. So we have two different equations. We have the circumference is equal to pi times the diameter, or we know the circumference is equal to, most of us know this one, 2 pi r. So you could use, you can use either one of those equations. It's always going to be the same thing for those, okay? So the first one, we're going to find the indicated measure. So we have to find the diameter of a circle whose circumference is 10 inches. So for this one, I'm going to use C equals pi times D. Well, it tells me the circumference is 10 inches. So this is equal to pi D. Well, just solve for the diameter. So we got to divide both sides by pi. So my answer for this is my diameter is equal to 10 divided by pi inches. Okay, now if I ask you to round that to the nearest tenth, then you would just simply do 10 divided by pi in your calculator, and you would get your diameter, which is going to be 3.18 for that particular problem. All right, for the second one, we have to find the circumference of a circle with a radius of 3 centimeters. So this one, I'm going to use my other equation, uh, 2 pi r, well, my radius is 3. So my circumference, 2 times 3 is 6, so 6 pi centimeters. Or if I ask you to round that to the nearest hundredth, 6 times pi in your calculator gets me to 18.85 centimeters for that one. All right, go ahead and pause the video and give those next two a try. All right, so for that first one, a radius with the circumference of a skirt the circumference of eight feet. So I know C is equal to eight feet. So I'm gonna set my circumference equation. So I'm gonna take eight, set that equal to two pi r, divide both sides by two pi. Okay, so your radius for this could be four divided by pi. But again, if I'm gonna ask you to round it to the nearest hundredth, one, Point two seven is my radius for number one. Number two, we have to find the circumference with a diameter of 2.4 meters. So I'm going to use my C equals pi times the diameter. So here I'm just going to do C is equal to pi times 2.4. So my answer is just 2.4 pi. Or again, if I ask you to round it to the nearest hundredth, we would be at a circumference of 7.54, and that is meters for that one. And this would be feet. All right, let's take a look at arc length down below. All right, so arc length is just a portion of the circumference of a circle. Okay, so if we were to have a nice little drawing over here, so here's a beautifully drawn circle, perfect circle. So everybody agree, let's say we have this point A and B. I hope everybody agree we'd have arc A, B that we could find. Like if I told you this was 75 degrees, well, the arc length is just how far literally does it take us to go from A around the circle to B, okay? The arc measure tells us how far, like what percent of the circle that we're going. We want to actually find out how far that distance is. So to find the arc length in a circle, the arc length is found by multiplying the circumference by the ratio of the arc measure to 360 degrees. What in the world is that even talking about? All right, let me show you. 
So here's our drawing. We have points A and B, and let's say it has this arc length or arc measure x degrees right there. All right, so if we want to find what arc A to B is, now notice, that's arc AB. That is talking about the distance along it. It's not talking about the arc measure, which is the it has the degree symbol with it. This is equal to, the fastest way to do it is x over 360 times your circumference. Well, it is 2 pi r. All right, so that is the best way to set that up. You could set it up as a proportion. All right, so AB, the arc AB, is e divided by 2 pi r is equal to the arc measure over 360. Okay, hence why I like using this equation right here. It's a little bit easier to use. It's because you're going part of the circle, so hence why we're doing multiplying it by the circumference, 2 pi r. All right, let's take a look at the back side of our notes. All right, so for this one, all we're having to do is find the given arc measure. So we're finding the distance, the arc length. All right, well, it tells us we have a radius of 8, and we have an arc measure of 134. So Fg is equal to 134 over 360 times 2 pi times your radius, which is 8. So here's how I would do this. I have 16 pi here, right? 2 times 8 is 16. And then I still have my 134 over 360 for that part. So we're going to times this. So here's what I would plug in, do this in your calculator, guys. I would do parentheses, three, 134 divided by 360. Then you can hit enter and you get either a fraction or a decimal depending on how you plug it in your calculator. Then just hit the times button and type in 16 pi and you will come up with your answer. So when you plug this in your calculator, you end up with 18.71 and this is centimeters is my arc distance or my arc length for that one. Number two, they don't give us a picture, but that is okay. We know we are going to do x over 360 and then times that by 2 pi r. So my arc measure is 62 degrees, and we're going to divide that by 360 degrees. Then we're going to times that by 2 pi times my radius, which is 2. So 2 times 2 is 4, so this is 4 pi here. And then if we do 62 divided by 360 in our calculator, the approximation for that is approximately 1.17. So then just times that by 4 pi in your calculator, and you should end up with a arc measure that is 2.16, and this is meters for that one. All right, go ahead and pause the video. Give that next one a try. Okay, so for GH, okay, so again, this is equal to 40 degrees over 360. This, or not equals, Mr. Conrad, we are timesing this by 2 pi times 6. So this is 12 pi would be the entire circumference, but we don't want it. We just want this 40 over 360 portion of it. So 40 divided by 360 in our calculator gets us to approximately 0.1 repeating. And then we're going to times that by 12 pi. So just times that answer by 12 pi in our calculator. We end up with 4.1 nine, and this is meters for that one. Number two, again, here's my arc length, or arc, my arc measure, excuse me. Here's my radius of four, so I have 135 degrees divided by 360 degrees times two times pi times my radius of four. So this is really just eight pi times whatever this mumbo jumbo out in front is. So 135 divided by 360 gets us to 0.375. So we're going to times that by 8 pi. And that gets us to approximately 9.42, and this is centimeters. All right, let's take a look at this last little bit down below. 
All right, so I've talked about radians briefly in the past. Okay, so normally we deal with degrees in our class. Well, we're going to teach you how to go to radians, okay? If 360 degrees is all the way around the circle, right? If we were to draw a lovely, beautiful, that's a horrible circle, but everybody agree, if we went all the way around that horrible circle, we would have 300, whoops, not 30 degrees, 360 degrees. Well, all the way around the circle in terms of pi, we learned was the circumference equation was 2 pi r. Well, if the radius is 1, it's just going to be 2 pi all the way around. So hence why we have this 2 pi radians over 360. They're the same thing. Okay, so multiply your, so to go from degrees to radians, just multiply your degree measure by either 2 pi over 360 or by doing pi over 180. You're going to get the same answer either way. Now, if you're going radians to there, take whatever the radian measure they give you. Okay, again, radian means it's in terms of pi, so you're going to have something like that in your starting, and then you're going to multiply it by the reciprocal, which is 360 over uh, 2 pi. So let's just say I give you, pay, say, pi halves to start off with. Well, that means we would times this by either 180, so I'm going to do 180 because it's a little easier to, to think of, times over pi. Well, notice when we multiply, my pi symbols cancel out. So really, I just end up with 180 divided by 2 if we multiply across, which would get me to 90. So pi halves, you guys, is the same thing as 90 degrees. Okay, it works the same thing for the other way. Let's just take a look at this example that I'm going to give you, and then I'm going to have you guys try to. So we're going to take 60 degrees and convert it to radians. Okay, I'm going to use the smaller number. Let's just be honest, it's a little bit easier to deal with. So I'm going to do 60 degrees, and we're going to times that by pi over 180. Okay, well, this just turns into a big fraction. 60 goes into 180 three times. So 1 times pi is just pi, 1 times 3 is just 3, so my answer for that is just pi thirds. So 60 degrees is equal to pi third radians, okay? Number 2, we're going to convert 5 pi 6 radians into degrees, so I'm going to take 5 pi divided by 6, and then we're going to times that by, well, again, we're going to radians, so we have to switch it around. The degree symbol goes on top, so 180 divided by pi. And again, you could still do the 360 over 2 pi. Your pi's cancel each other out. Okay, now I just need to do some cross multiplying. Well, 6 goes into 180 30 times. So what is 5 times 30? Well, that is 150 degrees. There's that. All right, go ahead and pause the video. Give that last two a try. All right, 45 degrees to radians. So again, so if I start off with degrees, I'm doing 45 degrees times, and then I'm going to put pi on top and divide it by 180 degrees. So if I cross cancel here like this, 45 goes into 180 approximately four times. So this answer is just pi divided by four. Now, if you guys aren't good with your cross canceling, you could simply just do 45 times pi divided by 180. So if you, in your calculator, if you type in 45 divided by 180, you get the fraction of 1 fourth. So 1 fourth times pi which is the same thing as pi fourths. All right, so three pi halves, so we have three pi halves here. Now, my pi symbol has to go in the denominator because I'm going to cross cancel, and I have 180 degrees goes on top. My pi's again cancel. Excuse me, two goes into 180 90 times. So now I just have three times nine, which is 270 degrees. So 270 degrees is the same thing is three pi halves. All right, there you go.